it's such a privilege to be talking to smart people who are faced with um, small business marketing challenges, especially challenges on social media marketing as well as digital marketing for their businesses in order to convert strangers into customers. Um, a lot of us are faced with this and this is a very common challenge in that everybody's looking for answers to it. We're all trying various things and we're all attempting many different ways of getting around this one problem, right? Millions of South Africans are on social media. So the problem is not really a lack of knowledge around how to use these platforms. It is a lack of strategy. It's the fact that we try so many things that we are not that we end up not being focused, that we end up not having a plan for a platform or at least a plan that enables us to convert these leads into customers, into paying customers, right? When we know social media so much and when so many of us are using social media, when a lot of us understand the ins and outs of social media as much as we do, why are we not leveraging social media then to sell more? Where are we getting it wrong? Where are we getting it wrong so much that so many brands, so many people get into hot water for their misuse of social media as a matter of fact, right? Why is it that so many businesses struggle to convert strangers into customers, whereas people are out there on social media looking for products all the time and people are shopping all the time? How can we improve our strategy to sell better, to reach out to people better. These are some of the questions that I will attempt to answer in this presentation today. And hopefully we all come out of this with one or two things that we can start applying to improve our social media and our digital marketing efforts. But first, focus. Focus, Daniel San. Most important. That's what Mr. Miyagi said. So by way of focusing we need to narrow down exactly what we are talking about and who we are talking to because the most important aspect of a great and successful social media or digital marketing campaign is focus it's focusing on who and they are why so who are we focusing on and why should they be interested in the type of content that you're putting out there be it business content be it um, career-driven content or any other piece of content that you put out there on social media? Why should these people be interested? And are they the right people? As a matter of fact, there are many social media and, ma and messaging platforms out there, right? Depending on who you ask, different people will tell you that different ones are important. There's everything from Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, TikTok, um, LinkedIn, um, Signal, Telegram, you know, there are so many platforms that if you think of an interest or something to do, there's a social media or messaging platform that serves that need. So for the purposes of diving, diving into a strategy or at least enabling us to come out of this with a strategy, I will focus on only three platforms, namely Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. There are many platforms out there, but because of our limited resources and because small businesses, entrepreneurs in the main, have so little time and so much to do and so many people to reach out to, we should focus our efforts and narrow in and zone in on the people that we want to communicate with. Facebook has about 25, actually more than 25 million users in South Africa, right? So. A lot of these people are looking for products, buying products all the time, and they are interacting and engaging with both each other as well as with businesses. So as somebody who's trying to sell effectively on Facebook, one of the things you need to do is create value for the people who follow you, right? Create value for these people in such a way that they trust you, one, as a source of other the product that you have as the source of information that you provide and that they they 
can engage with you and interact with you in a way that that appeals to them and in a way that they can trust and share with friends pages and groups are very effective for connecting people and businesses with with followers but before all of this before diving into um before diving into any one of these platforms before diving into facebook before sharing um, what you're selling on facebook and before telling everybody that you are on facebook and that they should buy a product that you're selling or engage and interact with you it's very important to have a focused strategy and a focused strategy on the people once again and i will repeat this a couple of times because this is one of the most important aspects right one of the things that facebook enables you to do is having localized targeting so as an example if you stay in soweto and sell your products in and around soweto facebook enables you to target people in and around soweto because if you're going to spend 100 rand 50 rand 50 dollars on targeting people there's no point in you targeting people who are 60 kilometers away from from where you are who are on the other end of pretoria if you are in soweto and you're not willing to travel um to pretoria to actually target the people you're looking for so a localized targeted strategy is one of the things you are able to do very effectively on facebook yes you're able to do it on other platforms as well but facebook is one of the most most effective platforms where that's concerned another platform that people use a lot which can be useful for a small business is twitter twitter has around 9 million users in south africa and one of the flaws that businesses end up having or at least that businesses struggle with in on twitter is that they chase and follow trending content or every piece of trending content there may be trending content or trending news that appeals to you that appeals to your business and you can interact and engage with that but don't try to do that every time with every piece of content because one you are diluting your message and secondly you may end up in hot water by sharing business content where it's not necessary or by being involved in a topic around which you are not an expert or around which you have no interest besides the fact that it's trending so choose your topics wisely and once you've chosen your topics engage around the topics that you've chosen and stick to some of these topics because this is where you will then be able to build trust this is where you are then able to build the kinds of engagement that you're looking for in order to convert um strangers into followers and convert some of these followers into customers later down the road right avoid um jumping in on every piece of content have a clear strategy and think around what you want to talk about and think around not just the business content but how the business content adds value to the people you're communicating with linkedin is probably by far the most useful business professional and career driven platform across social media it's the most trusted because people go on to linkedin for this kind of content for content that enables them to develop um, their careers that enables them to advance in business that enables them to be better more effective professionals so linkedin is is and can be extremely useful if you're using it for some of these reasons and if the people you're targeting are on linkedin for this content it's got over six million users in south africa and once again your strategy on linkedin is key your strategy is important here one of the things you can do on linkedin is find groups number one that share information that you are interested in um, or groups which 
you can join and in these groups then start sharing knowledge yourself because there are certain things that you know that you can share in a group where you then become a trusted source and as this trusted source you are then able to um, exchange contact with people or then turn these people into contacts and some of these contacts into leads business prospects as well as customers one of the other very important thing that you can do an easy low-hanging fruit on linkedin <clears throat> is to optimize your optimize your profile page and you can optimize your profile page firstly by just going back onto the list of jobs and work that you've done um, in the past and just make sure that it doesn't say you work at a furniture store where you worked 20 years ago and says you still work there today just as an example right so optimize your your profile in this way when you're on your linkedin um, profile go to the bottom of the profile so click on your name go to the bottom of your profile go to ask for recommendations um, recommendations on linkedin work the same way that testimonials do on a website so if you go to a website you're trying to buy shirts and you're using this website for the first time um, and there are two websites both selling the same black shirts um, one has testimonials on it one doesn't you're more likely to trust the one with testimonials recommendations work exactly the same way on linkedin where if you have recommendations it's other people saying hey john um is a great has great investment advice john is great as is a great salesperson um or you know simpiwe is great at this thing or the next thing and it's other people saying this about you other people who are trusted sources and industry leaders in their own right in their own specific way so ask for recommendations on LinkedIn, find groups that you can interact and engage on, have your strategy and try to concentrate or focus on career driven content, content that enables people to advance better in their lives, content that is professionally driven and you will then start building um, a great network on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Planning is critical. Um, and planning very much like understanding your audience and drilling down could be you working on a two week long plan for two weeks from now. So let's say on Monday, the 1st of March, you want to start posting your content. You can then plan your content for, for two weeks from Monday, the 1st of March, Monday to Friday and the following week and say, start having one piece of content every second day. So Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, have one piece of content that is either business driven, um, that adds value to your, to, to your followers, that enables you to drive a message that allows you to generate or build leads or to, to start communicating with people, plan your content and the more you plan, you'll start getting into a rhythm of what kind of content people are interested in. Start small and start building um, from one piece of content every second day and then start adding fillers. Before you know it, you'll have probably one or two pieces of content daily. What you also don't want to do on the other extreme is you don't want to have too many pieces of business content per day. So if, for instance, you use WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you will know that there's this one person in your network who always has, um, buy my products, buy my products, buy my products, um, you know, contact me for this, um, do this. And they have three or four of these things every single day. You see it as spam. You don't interact and engage with their account. You shut off. And what social media also learns, especially platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and Facebook, 
is that they learn their algorithms start start to very quickly learn that you don't share useful and interesting content so they start bringing you less and less traffic or enabling your content to be seen by less and less people and you don't want to be in that place if anything you want more and more people to to see your content so share interesting content share interesting information and useful information that people um that people can can share with their friends engage with and comment on listen and adapt the more you share content and the more you start posting you will begin to see trends and one of these trends will be the fact that people like your content more you will start to see on linkedin that oh 10 people viewed this post 100 people viewed that post 50 people viewed this post and then you'll start evolving your strategy in a way that gravitates more towards the kinds of content, the kinds of information, the kinds of communication that people are interested in. So focus on the detail. Focus on the details of what are people liking? What are people commenting on? Which bits of content that you're sharing are people sharing with their friends so if you share sales driven content for instance you'll get less likes and less interactions but if you share one piece of sales driven content um, or two pieces of sales driven content a week and you share three other pieces of content in the same week that people are interested in so you can see what starts to happen more and more people start to see your content come to your pages um, they see one piece of content that is business oriented one piece of content that isn't one piece of content that is interesting for them and one piece of content that is business oriented and the more they see this business oriented content some of it will begin to be interesting to them they will buy they will contact you they will share it with your friend with their friends and you will begin to engage with them effectively so what are some useful tools for you to start um, Hootsuite is one of those. So if you go to Hootsuite.com, Hootsuite allows you to schedule your content um, over time. So if we use, again, the 1st of March as our example, as I did earlier, you can schedule your content for, from today for the 1st of March. So that on the 1st of March, this piece of content, this image or this quote that you're sharing goes live on the 1st of March across platforms like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram, depending on the platforms that you're using. Canva. Canva is um, a very useful one, once again, that is also free where you can, you can design your own images. So it's an entry level graphic design platform that allows you to that allows you to design images or at least have basic graphic design. So if you take the image that you're looking at now, you can do something like this on Canva where you can add your own copy or your own text, your own message on a really beautiful image. It could be one of your images or it could be an image that you're using, but just make sure that you use images that you have the copyright to use. If you don't, then the next set of platforms, Unsplash or Pixabay, are useful ones for that, where you can get stock images that you can use on these platforms that, um, that are free, number one, and images that don't have um, copyright restrictions to them, and then you can add your, your, your copy on them. Blender, Blender is a video editing platform, I think it's on blender.org, um, or if you search on Google, Blender video editing. Blender is a free video editing platform where you can record a video like this. Um, and as I'm talking um, on this video, you can add your name here. If you want to add your name, you can add messages over there. You can add something else down here. Um, and you can edit this video any way that you want. Blender is one of those platforms that enable you to do that. So what are some do's and don'ts of social media? I'm not going to go through the whole list because as you can see, there's, um, 
many on either side, and there's another slide <laughs> with more of these. So I'm not going to get into all of them. Um, but one of the things you want to absolutely do is share visual content, other content that has images, video, or similar types of content. Share visual content as much and as far as possible. Add value to your followers. It's not all and only about selling. It's also about adding value. It's more actually about adding value than it is about selling. So another example. So if I'm looking for a pair of sneakers, right? I love sneakers, by the way. So if I'm looking for a pair of sneakers today um, and there are two brands that are trying to sell me sneakers on Facebook, the one they're, and they're selling me the exact same pair of sneakers, right? They are white, they are leather, they are amazing. They've just arrived in South Africa. Both brands are trying to sell it to me. The one brand sells me the value of the sneaker. They say, um, this is durable leather. It's just arrived. Um, you have a, get a 24 month guarantee on this thing, right? Don't we all wish? Um, and all of this. Uh, and the other brand just says, come buy the sneaker is 300 Rand. The one that adds value is the one that I'm more likely to go with. So add value to your followers, not just with business content, but with other messaging as well. Because as I said, if you balance your messaging between business, personal and useful, um, or at least personal and useful content, people will start gravitating even more towards your business content. Don't hog information. Don't share too many business posts. That is a no-no. In as much as you're trying to convert people, in as much as you have a business, don't share all the only business posts, especially on your personal pages. Um, build business pages where it's possible and leverage um, branding where you can, right? One of the things that IFAs have and one of the things that you as people working with clientele who are IFAs have is that you can leverage the association that you have between yourself and clientele and you can leverage the branding that you have. So imagine that I'm sharing a message with you. I'm trying to sell something with you, but I don't have a big brand associated with me. You're less likely to trust me because firstly, you don't know me, but secondly, the brand you associate with a certain level of stature, with a certain reputation. So do use some of these and infuse your personality as much as possible into your content. So if we go back to the example I used earlier of the 25 year old um, woman who lives in Soweto and works in Santon, if you're communicating with her, you want to infuse a personality that says to her, hey, this person knows me, this kind of company knows me. Um, and there are many examples of businesses like this in many different sectors that you can think of that infuse personality into their communication. Here are some content ideas for you to start with, um, or at least for you to think around. Good news or positive content always appeals to people, so go with that as far as possible. Um, try to go with video or visual content as far as possible, as I said earlier. If you're able to summarize news or useful information to your followers, um, that always goes down well. Um, one of the things that has been happening over the past couple of months is that the president will address the nation every time. And every time the president addresses the nation, all we want is, um, is the curfew. Um, should I be going to work? Um, you know, should I buy this? Should I buy um, this or not? You know, and the this was alcohol most of the time, um, right? So, so if you are able to summarize this, and there's the state of the nation address coming up, there's the budget speech coming up. There are many things in the news that you can summarize, which are useful and can be useful for for your followers. Again, I'm not saying do that with everything. Do that with things that are useful. So um, in this case, it will probably be things that have to do with, um, am I able to stretch my money? Am I going to be taxed more? Am I going to be taxed less? How can I make extra income? What are the laws around that? So these are some of the things that you can share. Motivational quotes always win on social media. So if you can share 
a motivational quote or two, those will be very helpful and those will, will generate, um, will generate traffic for you and they will generate these comments and engagement. If you forget everything that I've said today, if you forget my name, my name is Munges, but if you forget my name, right, remember this, focus on a specific audience and get to know that audience as much as possible. Um, drill down to the detail about your audience. Um, choose a platform or two to focus on. Don't try to do everything right out of the gates. Don't overwhelm yourself with everything. Choose one or two platforms. Plan your content as far and as much as possible. Listen to your audience and adapt to what they are trying to tell you, both directly and indirectly. Test different types of content. And now, for the most counterintuitive thing that I'll say here, no one wants to connect with a business, sadly. We all yearn for human connections. Even among the businesses that we connect with, even among the businesses we engage with, we want a human connection on the other end all the time. So be human, humanize your content, humanize your message and experiment with different types of content ideas. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope all of this was helpful, or at least I hope there's one thing that you found helpful out of this. If this helps you in any way to evolve your strategy, please send me a tweet on at Mongezi. Let me know how it's going. All the best of luck to you. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.